guys learning with rich here in this video after learning how to add wall footings okay so the next topic that we will be talking about foundation is um, adding or creating piers and pilasters okay so in case you don't have any idea a quick Google we're gonna show you what is piers and pilaster okay so a pier is an upright rectangular support for a structure or superstructure such as a bridge, an arch, or bridge, while a pilaster is a slightly projecting rectangular column built into or applied to the face of a wall. Okay, so that is what we are going to do. So we are going to add uh, these uh, structural elements. Okay, so the objective of this video is we're going to use an existing uh, concrete column and then after that we're going to modify that to become a pier okay so I have already shown you how to do that last time how to duplicate and create a new type but let us try to review it again so I'm going to open out the exercise okay so this is the last exercise that we did wherein we add here a wall footing right remember this one so that's the wall footing so we created the wall foundation and then wall footing so this time around let us add some piers okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, open my floor plan view okay so I'm going to open the floor plan view let's say I'm gonna open the top of footing view level so let's open up that one double click and then after that let's go to the structure select the structure and then let's go to the column okay so we are going to use structural column actually structural column can also be found on the uh, architecture tab column drop down and then you will also see there the structural column okay but let me just go to structure and then select here the st structural column the shortcut is CL okay so let's select that one and then for this let's say I'm going to use here a concrete rectangular column now I'll just use here um, how about 18 by 24 I'm going to use this and then duplicate it and then create a new type of concrete rectangular column so I'm going to select this one and then we are going to edit type okay so let's select edit type and then we are going to duplicate it so duplicate and then we are going to call this, uh, let's say, two feet, or let's say, uh, two feet six inches. Okay, so two feet six inches. Okay, and then I just select here. Okay, All right. So select. So after you create that type, so the next thing that we're going to do is modify here the dimension. Okay. So for the P, so I'll just put there 2 space 6. Okay, so even if you do not put here the unit, Revit will read it as 2 feet 6 inches. So you can type 2 space 6. So same with your PH. So once I click the P, the H here, the 2, 6 here will be having a unit type take a look see it automatically put there 2 feet 6 inches so 2 space 6 all right then after that just select ok there you go all right now for this one let's look here at the options bar so currently the settings here is depth okay so we are going to change this one so instead of depth I want to start using height up to level one okay so meaning to say the structural column that I will be adding will go uh, we're going to start on level one okay uh, it will start on top of footing up to level one All right so let us do this so what I'm gonna do at the moment I can't see here my my column but once I click let's say the intersection here I click that one There you go. You will now be able to see how our structural column or our pier added to our corner here. So if I click this one and then select the selection box to create 
an isolated 3D view of that one. This is now how it looks like. There it goes. There it go. Okay. Of course, you can always edit that one if you want. Once you click that, you can edit the base offset, the top level. Let's say you want that until level 2. You just need to change this to level 2. You can also add an offset distance. Okay? So, going back to my top of footing here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this column. Right click and then create similar. Right click and then create similar. So, let's select this one. And then, instead of picking it one by one, what I'm going to do is from the multiple uh, panel here, there is an option at grids. Okay? So, I'm going to select the at grids. There you go. And then, let's use a crossing selection. When I say crossing selection, it will going to be from right to left. That will going to be the selection. So, I'm going to pick. Then go in here to the left. So right to left. So that's a crossing selection. There you go. Okay. But of course, you are not going to put... There are some columns here that we do not need. Okay. It's okay. So let's select finish first. Terminate it or to finish our uh, column creation. So select finish. And there you have it. And then select modify here to terminate the tool. So, we don't need this. So, I'm going to use window selection. When you select, uh, when you say window selection, that will going to be uh, left to right. Okay, and then just delete it. Press delete. So, we don't need that. Okay, we don't need this. What else? Okay, so we don't need this. Don't need that. Don't need this one. Okay, and then let's go to the level 1. Level 1. Okay. Alright. So, did you see this uh, four columns that we have here? So, it, it's not on the right location. We want to put it somewhere here. So, I'm going to select this two column here. You click one and then hold control. And then, let's move it. So, select the move. Okay, and then you can turn on the constraint so that the movement will be constrained horizontal or vertical only. So I'm going to select constraint. So I'm going to pick the pace point here. And there you go. And I'll just type here the distance 4. For 4 feet. Okay, so enter. 4, enter. There you go. Now, same with these two here. Click, hold control, click, and then move. Pick a pace point. Then move to the right, then you type 4, enter. There you go. Okay. So, in 3D view, select the 3D view, and then turn off the section box. Just turn it off, so that it will show you the whole 3D view. Alright, there you go. So, you just created now your uh, column here, or your uh, piers or pilaster okay so if you want to see only the pier or the pilasters so you can click one and then you can select temporary hide isolate and then you can select isolate category just click that and there you go oh so this is not what I want okay because I forgot they are just all on the same category. So if I click this one, the category is structural column, but this one is also structural column. How about this one? Oh, this is our link model. Okay, so that's why it's just there. So this is our link. But as you can see, the other element that is under uh, structural column category is also isolated, just like this one. This is the one that we created earlier. Okay, so the reason why we are not able to hide this the roof here, the curtain uh, curtain wall or curtain panel, it's because it's a link. So if I want to hide the link model, I just need to go to the visibility graphic overrides. Alright. 
and then let's go to the Revit links. You can just uncheck the visibility of the architectural model and then just select OK. There you go. Okay. So if you only want to see this element that we just created, our pilaster or piers, so I'm going to select one of these uh, structural columns, right click, and then I can hide in the view. So I'm going to select hide by category. Oops, sorry, it's not like that, sorry. It should be crossing selection like this. Okay, select and then right click, hide elements. There you go, okay. All right, now if you want to go back to your normal view, just click again the temporary hide isolate, reset, and then after that, you turn on the reveal hidden elements. Why? Because we want to reveal again our uh, structural column. So you turn this on, click that, and then what will happen is it will show you all the elements that you have hidden in the view. Okay, and then I'm going to select my struct one of the structural column here. Okay, yeah, I'm having a difficulty selecting it. Okay, let me change that to wireframe so I can select from here. There you go. So there's our hidden element. Click. Alright, and then right click. I can select uh select all instances visible in view okay and then let's unhide it there you go and then toggle reveal hidden elements mode okay select that one there you go okay now for our link model just go again to the visibility graphic overrides links check okay there you go so that's now our model Okay, so basically that's how you add piers and pilasters or structural columns in your project. So the next topic that we are going to talk about is we're going to add isolated footings. Okay, so for now, thank you for watching. Have a nice day.